Hi, in this first video we're going to focus on the portion of the UX map widget library that allows to create visual diagrams of the user experience and see how you can incorporate them in your Azure prototype and also how you can adapt it to your own needs. So I'd like to start from this uh, sample file. Uh, this is included in the package when you download it. Uh, it's, uh, it's called demo file. There's also an empty template you can use to create a new project so everything is set up and you don't have much work to do and there's a widget library as well. So uh, let's see how this file looks uh, in Azure and you can play around with it, see how it's built up. You see there's different pages here. There are high level prototypes but on top there's a page containing the map of the user experience where you want to represent everything going on in the user interface, every uh, interaction patterns and really uh, everything that happens in the front end, how the interface reacts to the user's action and let me show you the HTML export of this. Uh, so you see it's a visual language to represent uh, anything going on in the interface but also in the background. So for example you have uh, pieces of content, call to action, conditional logic uh, and then here you, there's also a background event, this uh, confirmation email for example and then you can navigate uh, this map from one portion to the other you can collapse the navigator and there's a legend that shows uh, the visual language that is used and this is pretty, pretty self-explanatory uh, so I'd like to show you how to create this. First let me just uh, click around on the prototype and you can see that on every single page there's this tool uh, on top and this is the main tool to activate the UX map functionality. Uh, the icon on top uh, allows you to activate the nodes uh, on every single page and then on mouse over the description is displayed but I'm going to focus on this on the second video. So now I'm going to focus on the the second part at the bottom allows to uh, load the UX map. So let's see how to build a map from scratch. Actually, we're going to start with the with the empty template. Uh, so as I said, this is the easiest way to create a new project. But I'm going to show you also if you start from scratch or if you want to include the UX map uh, with a library in an existing project, how to do that. Uh, the, the the only technical thing to be aware of at the beginning is to make sure that you have Font Awesome installed on your machine. Font Awesome is a web font collection that um, uh, is used in some of the widgets, for example, in, the, in this uh, uh, main toggle. Uh, the reason is that you can easily style these icons. For example, I can change the color. Uh, so uh, a web phone has been used and if you share the prototype online for example you put it on Akshare you have to make sure that also in the generate HTML file uh, under web fonts there's a description for font awesome so this is already set up in the empty template you can always copy this link uh, if you create uh, a new project from scratch and if you have any doubts uh, there's a detailed description of uh, steps to follow in the user's guide inside the package uh, so you can check that as well. Uh, then uh, next thing to be like next thing to do is to make sure that the widget library is loaded in your prototype. In this case, it's already there. If it's not, you just click here on Load Library, and then you select it from the package, and it's uh, then loaded into your prototype. So now I'm going to start building my map. As you can see in the widget library I have three sections. I have the UX map section with all the widgets that I'm going to use now and then another section is for the annotation we're going to cover that in the second video and then there's this quick reference guide. This is useful if you forget the steps to follow. You can anytime drag it and read it. It's a very very uh, short uh, description of all the steps. Very concise. Uh, so let's focus on this now so building the map in itself is really really simple you just drag the widgets uh, I use different ones 
and uh, and then I'm going to connect them using the connector tool here and this is going to be even easier in Azure 8 by the way now I'm just using Azure 7 uh, some improvements in version 8 are coming to the connector tool um, uh, something to be aware of it might occasionally happen uh, especially with this condition which is that the, the connectors lose their shape in that case you just right click and reflow them or in the in this specific case uh, you can also just move them on one pixel and then they recover the, the original shape anyway that doesn't happen very often but if it happens you know how to deal with it uh, also when you move all the widgets together that that can sometimes happen especially with these widgets so uh, one recommendation is to uh, divide uh, your map uh, into different masters especially when the map starts to get big because you don't want to move around all the widgets whenever you need some extra space and also it's a it's a good way to uh, manage different portions of uh, your prototype because you have the navigator here that allows you to move from one section to the other you don't have to worry about uh, leaving some extra space between one or the other let me show you in the demo file here uh, I'm gonna make this smaller you see there's different portions like for example one is the, the login module here there's a global navigation here and so on uh, each of these is a separate master so uh, this is really recommended for performance issues if you have too many widgets on just one page it's going to be a problem in the long run and also I can easily move these around so if I want to change the position I can do it very quickly uh, so going back to our empty template I'm going to add a few widgets here connector and then I'm going to convert this into a master and I'm going to call it module A good so now I have two masters module A and my legend down there so next thing to do is to add the links in the main navigator so I open this uh, panel and I call this module A I'm not going to use the other links for now and then I have the legend so I want to set targets for these links and uh, you see the condition uh, the, the sorry the action is already there so I just need um, a target anchor so I'm going to add a hotspot here in module 8 on top better to leave some space okay so I'm going to call this Ash A. Okay, so now going back to my widget, I'm going to look for Ash A. And here we go. Uh, the condition is already set scroll vertically, horizontally with a linear effect 300 milliseconds. And then the legend is going to do the same extra, is already there. So now if I export this see I have my navigator with module A and legend and it works so uh, other thing you might want to do is to create uh, links within a section of the of the map but contextual links so for that uh, you use this widget for the call to action and this other widget for the target so let's say that uh, Okay, let's create a new one very quickly just for the sake of showing this. I'm gonna call this module B. Okay, and I'm going to put that target elements inside module B. So it's going to be here. So that's the destination where I want to go when I click on this button. Uh, okay, so now this button is right on the UX map page, so I can easily click here and select uh, the the target. I uh, think I didn't give it a name, but it's this one. Uh, so I can call it, let's call it uh, 
actually h1 uh, the problem though is that uh, actually this is would be separated from the master where it's supposed to be so I actually have to include it in the master but the moment that I do that I can't find uh, h1 anymore here if I look for all my targets it's not there because it's only showing me the the hotspots on this master so what I have to do is to instead of using this action I have to use a raise event a raise event is use anytime you have a master and you want to specify um, an event trigger uh, regardless what the action should be you're going to set the action later in uh, uh, every single occurrence of that master uh, in the in the pages where it's uh, where, where it's uh, being used so what I do here is I create a race event I give it a meaningful name like scroll to uh, I said it was uh, one, right? So scroll to one. I select it, and here we go. I have the race event. So now, if I click on this master in the UX map page, it's going to show up here. And then I'm going to say I want to scroll to widget, and now the widget is going to be available. So here we go. I can create uh, an animation if I want. Here we go. So that's how you do it, and and it works. Okay, so the last thing to look at um, is how to create a link uh, to a portion uh, in the prototype. So you might want to link from the UX map. Let me go back to the project template to the sample you might link to a specific page in the prototype because you want this uh, map to be interactive and to be connected to the to the rest of the prototype so in this case for example it leads me back to the home page uh, but I might also want to uh, link to a specific portion within a page so for example in my prototype here I have a page with all sort of error messages and notification and let's say that this incorrect pin notification is the one that uh, is um, associated in the login register area somewhere here I'm going to have incorrect pin here we go so when I click on this widget I want to scroll to that page but I want to scroll at that page in the exact position where that is so let's uh, look uh, at the demo file and actually how this is achieved um, well, the end show in the HTML how it works. So if I click here, you see it goes to the specific target. So let's see how to do it in Azure. Uh, so in the login register module, you see I've uh, I've used this widget called uh, in my library. I can find it as content widget with link. So when I drag this widget into the work area. Uh, there's a set value there's a, there's a variable that is being used here and then an action to open a new page the reason for using the variable is that it's the only way to make sure that when you load that page uh, the, the, the page is uh, uh, the, the content of the page will scroll to the desired position so now I'm not going to do it from the scratch. Uh, I, uh, obviously, if you just want to click to one page, just want to set a link to a page, uh, you can ignore the first condition and just choose the page that you want it to link to. But in this case, what I've done is I set a value for this variable. This variable is called scroll to. You will find it in the empty template, but if you start from scratch, you will have to create one and then you give it a meaningful name in this case incorrect pin because that's where I want to scroll that's what I want to happen and then the uh, next thing to do is in the target page you have to create uh, an onload page condition an onload condition uh, so when this page loads you have to make sure that uh, the variable uh, sorry the, the value of the variable is checked and depending on that value the page will scroll to the desired target so in the case of the I think that was um, incorrect pin so there's uh, 
all these uh, are different values that the, the variable can have. In this case with incorrect pin, a condition is set on page load so the page will scroll to incorrect pin, so to this target. And then uh, the value of the variable is reset so the next time this page is open it won't uh, necessarily go to that target again. Uh, so that's the way you create a link from uh, from the UX map to any page in the prototype in a specific position within that page. It's, uh, it's a workaround, but that's uh, the way to do it right now. So a couple more things to add. So first of all, all these uh, widgets have uh, styles applied to them, and uh, they are not just vectorial shapes that you can change the properties of. But if you look at the styles drop down, there's a lot of different styles, and each of them is created for a specific widget that it uh, applies to. So, for example, these two widgets have two different styles applied to them. There's also mouse over styles, and you can edit uh, these styles. So, if you're not familiar with styles, I'd recommend that you spend some time because it's tremendously useful in Azure. It's really powerful. For example, you can let's say change the border color of all the content elements just this widget and so all the occurrences of that widget will change so you see um, the border is now red but not to the other widget so you can do it if you want to change the look and feel uh, in a specific project but you can also change the styles for the widget library if you edit the widget library the styles are, are here and actually the styles that we were looking at in the in this project have been inherited from the from the widget library because the first time that you drag an item into the canvas the style applied to to that specific widget are added to your project the, to the project that you're working on uh, right now there's no styles for connectors you can in theory you can create a style manually but it's really not very practical but in Azure 8 there will be styles also for connectors so that's useful anyway the connector will inherit the, the style used the last time so it's not too bad uh, last thing is this widget that we've seen before the one that allows you to integrate uh, the UX map with the rest of the prototypes so can be activated and deactivated uh, so uh, you have to drag the widget called main toggle on each page in the prototype. In this case, I'm using the empty template, it's already there. If you start from scratch, you have to drag that widget. The first time that you drag it is, um, is added to a prototype as a master, and this master contains a dynamic panel that is uh, docked to the top right corner of the browser and inside I can see the active inactive icons so what's important in the case of the UX map page is on this page you want this icon to be in selected state so you see this is non-selected and this is selected in this specific panel called UX map that contains this icon so what you have to do once you've included the widget on this page you have to make sure on page load you set that uh, panel state to UX map view. So UX map view is the active active state. So that's all you have to worry about and the rest will work automatically.